How's everybody today? I'm so happy. Um, I think we're getting rain later on today, and we need it so bad. I've been wondering when we're going to get some more. Now I know. That's right. So, hey, glad to see everybody here today. Um, awesome, awesome, great testimonies in the beginning. Uh, I used to work for an origami uh, factory, and then it folded. Darlene and I went away for uh, an overnighter, and the uh, hotel tried to charge us 10 extra dollars for AC. Not cool. So, so there was an elderly couple, right, elderly, elderly couple, and um, they were watching TV, and she looked at him, and she said, hey, you remember when we were dating, you used to hold my hand and kiss my cheek and nibble on my ear, and he said, you bet, wait right here, and I'll go get my teeth. So, <laughs> all right, so that's all for free. We are doing a series on the book of Mark, and um, it's been a great series. And last week we went into chapter 13, and usually I've been doing one chapter a week, but chapter 13 has too much content in it to go through it. And so chapter 13 is where Jesus is asked by his disciples, uh, they're saying, hey, look at this beautiful building, the temple, Mount, and, and the, the tabernacle, and uh, and, and look how beautiful it is. And Jesus said, I'm going to tell you right now that not one stone will be left on another. And so he gets into this whole discourse in chapter 13, basically about the end times. And I know people freak out about the end times, like it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's just the end of an age, right? It's just the end of what's called the church age. God had dealt with humanity through the nation of Israel, right? The, the, the book is a Jewish book. It's all about the Jews. Uh, Jesus was a Jew, right? He wasn't blonde hair, blue eyed from California. Uh, he was a Jew. And, um, and so God had been dealing with the world through the nation of Israel. That stopped in 70 AD when Titus invaded Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. And so the words of Jesus were fulfilled right then and there, um, uh, you know, 30 years after when the Roman general Titus sacked the city, destroyed it, and they dismantled the entire Temple Mount. Uh, it was just just gone at that point. And um, so it's, there's a lot of confusion about that. And we started last week in trying to clear that up. And like I mentioned, you know, some of this might have been, uh, you know, grade school, some of this might have been high school, but we're kind of like in college, right? And I'm asking you to put your thinking caps on, because last week we looked at a couple of of things out of scriptures that's a little difficult to understand. A day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day, six days of creation, 6,000 years of human existence so far on planet Earth. The seventh day was a day of rest, the 1,000 year reign of Christ, which is going to be happening uh, probably sooner than later when we look at what's going on in the world in which we live in. And so all of these things, and we, we started talking about Daniel's 70th week, and people say, what in the world is that? So Daniel is in captivity, and he's praying, and he's reading the book of Jeremiah, and he finds out that the captivity was only supposed to last for 70 years, and, and, and the 70 years are up, so he starts praying, saying, God, what's up? And, and, and he gets this vision, and the angel tells him, 70 weeks have been determined for my people, talking about Israel. 70 weeks God was going to deal with Israel. And the word weeks literally just means seven, so it's 77s. Uh, and, and when the translators put in weeks... It misleads things because it's really talking about years. So he said the first is seven sevens, which is 49 years. From the issue to rebuild the tabernacle in Jerusalem till its completion will be seven sevens, 49 years. And we went through the exact dates because when we talk about the scriptures, we're not talking about mythology, right? We're not talking about some pie in the sky ideas. We're talking about something that is backed up by archaeology, something that is backed up historically because there are dates and names given in the scriptures unlike any other book of any other religion in the world. It's factual. It's real. So there was a date given for the decree to rebuild the temple. 49 years later, it was rebuilt. And so there was seven sevens. And then he said there's going to be 62 sevens until the time of Messiah, which was 434 years from that time, which, guess what? That would have put Jesus at the baptism 
in, in the Jordan River by John when he starts his public ministry as Messiah and immediately they reject him. And they say, Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And so this is, an, this is a timeline. But when you take 62 sevens and seven sevens, you get 69 sevens. And so there's a missing seven somewhere, and that's called Daniel's missing 70th week. When does that happen? Well, that is the time of tribulation. And this is what we're going to look about uh, to this morning a little bit. Uh, a seven-year period that the Bible talks about uh, horrible tribulation that will bring in the second coming of Christ. And so people get confused all uh, about this. Um, but let's just start, let's just start off because we are talking now about the return of Christ. So there's confusion about the destruction of the temple back in 70 AD by the Romans and the destruction of a temple that will be rebuilt in the end times that will be destroyed by the Antichrist and his armies. So we start off by looking at Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and this is what it says. <clears throat> this is the angel still talking to Daniel, and he says he will make a firm covenant. He's talking about the Antichrist. He will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. So that's a seven-year period of time. But in the middle of that week, he will put a stop to the sacrifice. Underlying that, he's going to stop the sacrifice, put that on the back burner. I'm going to come back to that. He's going to stop the sacrifice and the grain offering, and on the wings of abomination will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. And so this is what the angel told Daniel. Jesus comes later, right, a long time after, and, and back in the Gospel of Mark, here we go, chapter 13, verse 14, and he says, but when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, this is in the temple, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, the one who is on housetops must not go down or uh, go in to get anything out of his house, verse 16, the one who is in the field must not turn back and get his coat, but woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babes in those days, but pray that it may not happen in winter. And so this is the, the, the time, this is the last week, the last seven years, a time of tribulation, and the Antichrist is on the move. The Antichrist is, is, is really heating things up. When we talk about the Antichrist, there have been many figures of the Antichrist uh, in history. One of the most accurate ones took place in 170 BC, a Syrian king by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes um, raided Jerusalem, went into the temple, the temple that Ezra and Nehemiah rebuilt um, after their return from captivity, and he offered swine's blood on the altar, which is an abomination because it's an unclean animal for the Jew, and he erected a statue of Zeus in the holy place. So he defiled the temple. So that's a type of antichrist, right? He went in there and, and exalted things other than God as being God. And then we also talked about Herod's temple that was destroyed by Titus. And so you got the Roman Empire, which was a type of the world, and it's going to be the revised Roman Empire that the Antichrist rules over, or basically like the, the nations of NATO, what we would call NATO now. We hear about that with the war between Russia and Ukraine. And, um, and so, so the Herod's temple destroyed by Titus in 70 AD, that was a type, again, of the destruction um, uh, of, of the temple. And then the last one is the temple being rebuilt during the tribulation period. Um, and this is the one that the Antichrist is going to profane. And so um, Jesus says this, going in Matthew's gospel, Jesus said this, Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branches are already become tender, it puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things happening, recognize that he is near right at the door, that Jesus, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And so this is why they got confused in 70 AD thinking that Jesus was going to come right back then because the temple was destroyed. He's going to come back. They thought his return was going to be imminent. They didn't see that there was going to be 2,000 years of this church history that God was going to be dealing with the world through his church, which he is still doing as of right now. Um, but that will change as we get into that seven-year period and things revert back to Israel and God dealing with the nation of Israel. And that's why I spent so much time last week talking about the importance of Israel. Keep your eyes on Israel in the news. Whenever you see something about Israel in the news, pay attention, because that's God's timepiece. That's what's happening. But in this portion of Scripture, Jesus says this, Learn the parable of the fig tree. 
It puts forth its leaves, and you know that summer is near. Now, I want to go back to Mark's gospel, because in chapter 10, we already saw in chapter 10 of Mark, where Jesus cursed the fig tree, and it died. And the whole symbolism of that was that the fig tree represents the nation of Israel and scriptures. Um, there's so many scriptures in the Old Testament as you are like a fig, you are like uh, the vine of the fig and all this kind of stuff. And so Jesus cursed the fig tree because it had leaves only and no fruit. And it was symbolic of the nation of Israel that they had these, these leaves of religion, like this show of religion, but no fruit. They weren't doing what God told them to do. God told them that, listen, you are the light for all of the nations. Open wide your arms and, and let that light shine and embrace the nations and let them come to me. And instead, they drew a great big circle around themselves and they said, we're the chosen ones of God and everyone else can basically go to hell. And, and, and Jesus was ticked off about that. He was like, guys, like you're not even anywhere as close to what I have for you to do. You're missing it by a country mile. So he curses the fig tree as a demonstration that God is getting ready to be done with you. So the fig tree represents Israel. Now, look at it in light of what he's saying. He's saying, learn the parable. What's a parable? A parable is something that happens in nature or in life that symbolizes something spiritual. And he's saying, learn from the fig tree. It, when it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer's near. You also know that when all these things are happening, that that generation is not going to pass away until all these things take place. So the generation that will be alive in the end is going to see Israel put forth its leaves. What does that mean? Well, leaves are a type of religion that is self-effort. We go back to the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve have fallen, and they recognize that they're naked before God, and what do they do? They clothe themselves with fig leaves. So it's a type of self-effort, like I'm going to prove that I'm okay because of what I do. And that's such a fallacy. I, I hear that this is like basically the belief. This is the spiritual belief of Americans in 2023, that if we are good enough, we all go to heaven. And that is such a lie from the pit of hell. That damns more people to eternal hell than anything else. If I can just be good enough, God loves us and we're all going to go to heaven. No, that is not true. Because it is not self-energy or self-works or self-goodness that gets us into heaven. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? It's a sacrifice. Because none of us can be good enough. You can't take something that is broken and make it good. Or have goodness come out of it. Right? And so Jesus is saying, listen, the, Adam and Eve tried to clothe themselves, and God said, no, I'm going to clothe you with the skin of animals. There's got to be blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. There's no appeasement to the wrath of God. And so what is this religious system? What are the leaves? Well, it's going to be when Israel shortly rebuilds their temple on the Temple Mount and starts up the animal sacrificial system again. That's putting forth their leaves of their religion under the law. And that's when Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until all of this unfolds. So the generation that's alive to witness Israel rebuild the temple. And boy, I'll tell you what, there are murmurings and plans of it being done even as we speak today. They're, they're in preparation of doing it. And when they do it and when they start the animal sacrificial system, then that generation is not going to pass without all of these things happening. Now, if you remember the first scripture, I said, remember this, because it says the Antichrist is going to come in and put a stop to their sacrificing. So the Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to make a covenant of peace with Israel. And then that starts the seven years of tribulation. Halfway through, three and a half years, he steps in and he stops their sacrificial systems, exalts himself, and then you have the last three and a half years which is called the Great Tribulation. And that's when it's going to be very, very difficult to live during those times because it is going to be a lot of the, the wrath of the Antichrist and the wrath of God, and it's just not going to be a great time when all of that starts to happen. So what do we see in today's world, like right now, 2023? Well, number one, we see that Israel is a nuclear power. That has significance because as of right now, there's only 
seven or eight, don't quote me exactly, but I believe there's only seven or eight nations of the world right now that have nuclear weapon capability. And Israel's one of them, right? So that has, that has significance. There's also a coalition of nations that are against Israel right now. We know that all the um, Islamic uh, uh, nations, right, Syria and Jordan and Egypt and uh, 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 Iraq and Iran and all of these places, they hate Israel. Right? Iran said we will never have peace in the Middle East until Israel is driven into the Mediterranean Sea. So see, when, when, when people use the word peace, it's, it's all... It's all it's all relative to their meaning of what peace is. So when 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 Muslims say we want world peace, okay, their definition of peace is the eradication of Israel, right? Like so if we can annihilate the Jews and Zionism, then we'll have world peace. So when they say peace, peace, right, it doesn't mean what we would think it is. So there's a coalition. <clears throat> now there's also a danger of the communistic nations of China and Russia, and Russia's in a war right now that. They're threatening already the use of nuclear warfare, so this should get our attention up a little bit, right? And then also, we're not, so, so number three, we're dealing with uh, a, a one-world religion. Um, anybody here familiar with Abu Dhabi? Uh, and so Abu Dhabi, um, so okay, one person knows where Abu Dhabi is. Um, and, you know, it's it's and and, and, and you know, there's also the, there's also the city of Dubai, right? And so, do you know what the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi is? The people in Dubai do not like the Flintstones, and the people in Abu Dhabi do. Okay. Come on, like, work with me, right? All right, so what you, what you don't realize, I bet, you, I bet you hardly anyone here knows this. This just happened. It happened in 2022, and then it just was completed in early 2023. And it is the... It is the Abrahamic family house. And this is what it is. It's in Abu Dhabi, okay? And, and what it is, is I'm not sure which one's which, but one of these is a Catholic church, one is a Jewish synagogue, and one is a Islamic mosque. And they're all together because we're just one big brotherhood and we're all in the family of God. That's the beginning. That just happened, folks. And you never saw it on the news. You never heard a blip about it. And yet it just happened one step closer to this one world religion that we're all the brotherhood of man and we're all children of God. Well, in the sense of being created, yes, we are all created of God. In the sense of being in a relationship with God, no. Because there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. It's, it, Jesus, Jesus said the most politically incorrect statement that it could have ever been said by anyone. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me, right? And, and so, so yeah, I'm sorry. It's like that. that's just a sham leading people to believe. And I hear it all the time. Like, you know, and this is what I'm saying. As long as I'm a good person, I'll go to heaven. You'll go to heaven. We'll all go to heaven. No. No. Jesus looked at the religious leaders of their day, and they were saying, we're of Abraham. And Jesus said, no, you're of your father, the devil. So are we all children of God according to Jesus? No, he said, your father is Satan. You're doing the desires of your father, Satan. You're not lining up with me. You're not lining up with what God is really doing for the salvation of people. So all of a sudden we have that happening. We also have one world economy that's, that's working uh, uh, in this, in the, you know, cryptocurrency. Have you heard of cryptocurrency? Um, it, it's, it's, it's the wave of the future, right? We're going to go to digital finances. Why? Because number one, it's trackable. And number two, it's stoppable. So if we all go to digit coins or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Brit coins or whatever, um, you know, and then all of a sudden uh, Everett's out there witnessing and they say, hey, you're actually you're harassing people. Um, you're only going to have this much of your money. Or you can no longer ride public transportation. Or this is what's happening in China now, right now. They use this merit system on whether you tow the line, and if you don't, then, well, you can't ride public transportation. You get punished by the state. And so this is total, this is all about, folks, this is all about control. It's all about control, right? And then you have the apostate church. You have a church that's pro-abortion and pro-LGBT and all these things that are, like, just against Scripture. It's not saying that we don't love people that are caught in sin, because at one time we were all caught in sin, Right? And then you have the days uh, of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, that was a time when it was judging. Jesus says, as it, as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, so it will be in the end times. And we have everybody marrying everybody and people not knowing what they are anymore. And I don't know if you know, there's like 57 
di- how many? There's 73. See, I, I do, there's 73 different genders that are identified today. And I don't even know if that counts the, 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 the fuzzies, right? Because you also have the fuzzies that identify as animals nowadays. Um, and so, so it's crazy. And so this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 28. Uh, it was the same as it happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It'll be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. So Jesus is saying, I'm coming back. Now listen, I don't know if you saw the title of this, but it's called The Lion Rides a Horse. Because Jesus came as the Lamb of God. He's going to come back the second time as the Lion of God. Right? And we talked about that when a king came into a city for peaceful reasons, he came on a donkey. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he came on a donkey. And they said, How, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he, all this. When he comes a second time, the Bible says he's coming on a white horse. That meant I'm coming to conquer. In other words, game's over. All the godless stuff that's going on, all the godless nations, all the stuff that's going on, all the evil of the world is going to be judged. So we're, the biggest transition that's ever happened in human history is getting ready to happen in a seven-year period of time called the tribulation. And at the end of that, Jesus returns, and it'll start the 1,000-year reign of Christ when it says that they'll beat their, their swords into plowshares. And I mean, you know, the lion will lay down with the lamb, and it's going to be a, a, a beautiful, tranquil, peaceful time. It's going to be like heaven on earth, right? And, and those who are Christians, those who are following Jesus, are going to rule and reign with him over God's creation. And so, I mean, we don't even know what that really represents, all that that represents. And then, and then you've also got um, the mark of the beast. So the, the, these are things that are happening. You know, the mark of the beast, nobody really knew what it was. And now we can see how it's really developing, right? It's going to be some form of identification code that people will receive either on their hand or on their forehead. And um, you won't need passwords anymore. Uh, I mean, that, that tempts me. Uh, that tempts me. It's like, you know... I got like seven pages of passwords for stuff I hardly ever go on. Um, but then, but then, you know, listen, everything that's going to unfold is not going to be resisted. It's going to be welcome because it's going to be for the good. Uh, you won't be able to buy or sell without that mark. It's going to be linked up with AI. It's going to be lifted up with your, your cryptocurrency. And it's all about control. But it's going to be good because, listen, you know, every now and then I'll go to the gas station and before I put my credit card in a little slot, I grab hold of that sucker and I wiggle it. Because there's people that put copycat readers over those. Read your card, steal your bank account. So they say every now and then, like, you should just pull on it and see if it pops off. Because if it does, it's a crypto, re- it's a, a card reader. So how cool will it be to just go like this? Ving, put your hand before there. Ving, automatically comes out of my crypto bank account. I get my gas. I go on my way. Pow, I get in an accident. I'm knocked out. Nobody knows what to do. They come, the EMTs come, scan me. Boom, there's all my medical records, my person of interest to contact, and, you know, all these different things. It's, so it's going to be really, really good. And they got the little computer chips that they put in dogs and cats right now, right? You, if you have animals, they've probably been shipped, right? Okay? So with the technology unfolding the way it is, what if that chip is just a readable micro nano AI tattoo invisible you ever go to you ever go to an arcade or something they stamp you but you can't see it and then they take a blue light and they go like or a black light and she's like oh you can see it if you it won't even be visible but it'll be there so there's a mark that's going to that's going to come in these last days and listen it's 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 there the technology 30 years ago when was it 30 years ago maybe not that far maybe 22 years 25 years ago when walmart distribution came to raymond and they opened up right after they opened up they got a bunch of people from the town and i was invited to go and look at the facility and the guy was walking us through the facility and and there's miles of conveyor belts in there and there's people unstacking you know a tractor trailer pulls in a tractor trailer backs up and it's got nothing but flat screen sony tvs Ding, 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 they're unloading it, and they're going on these conveyor belts. This guy's over here, he's unloading, and it's produce. Ding, 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 it's going all over. And these belts got flippers on them, and they're flipping things around because they got an order for the, for the Walmart and Concord. They need three TVs and this much produce, and zing, 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 that's all going down this conveyor belt, loaded in a truck, and it's going to that Walmart. It's phenomenal. And, it, and, it, and it's covering all of northern New England, right? It's, 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 it's just sending products all over and, and the guy was saying, this thing can handle 
oh, I forgot, like exponentially, like some kind of like, like 3 billion pieces of data a day. It, it, can, it can track 3 billion things a day. And I'm, I'm, like, I'm like in the back of the crowd. I'm working my way to the back of the crowd because I know what I'm getting ready to say. So then he goes, does anybody have any questions? I'm like, I do, because I want everybody to hear what I'm going to say. And he said, what is it? I said, the Bible says in the end times, they'll be able to track every single human being on earth. And you're telling me that that technology is here today. He didn't even miss a heartbeat. And he goes, yes, it is. And that was like 25 years ago. And he was like, yes, it is. Yeah, we, you know, supercomputers can do that. And technology has gotten even. So, so this is the generation that we live in, right? And the biggest sign that we're talking about was the fact that in 1968, Israel became a nation again for the first time in 2,000 years. None of this stuff could have been fulfilled for, for the last 2,000 years. Israel is back in a nation, so that starts God's timepiece up again. So we're talking about the abomination of desolation. We're talking about this person called the Antichrist. This is what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, which means a falling away. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. So the Antichrist is going to break this covenant of peace, and he's going to say, I'm your Messiah. I am God. And, and, and so when you think about this, he's going to exalt himself. He's going to say that he's God. And then you think about God's indictment through the prophet Isaiah against Satan when he fell. So we go to Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 14, and look what it says. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high God. So this is the very nature of Satan. It is one of self-centered pride. It's all about me. I want to be my own God. So every person that says, I don't want Christ, I don't need Jesus, I'm okay, what are they doing? They're exalting themselves as their own God. And that is a spirit of anti-Christ. I don't need Christ. I don't want Christ. I'm okay. I've witnessed, I remember witnessing to a guy in a nursing home, had throat cancer, talked to one of those little machines and everything, and I sat there and I just pleaded, I, I, I just Preach the gospel. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Dude, you are dying. You're going to die within probably the next 14 days. And I plead with you to accept salvation that's in the person of Jesus Christ. And he took that little thing and he goes, I'm okay. Dude, I walked away. What do you do? It's like, he's got that free right. He's got that free. It's not that God sends people to hell. It's just that people don't want God and they go there on their own volition. Right? So, so this, is, this is horrible. So then in 2 Thessalonians, it says this. Do you not remember that Paul is talking again? He says, do you not remember that when I was with you, I was telling you these things. And you know what restrains him now so that in his time he'll be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness, and this is that pride and that arrogance that I can speed if I want to, right? It's like, I don't need law. I don't want law. And no one's going to tell me what to do. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. So there's something holding the Antichrist back right now. Verse 8, it's going to be removed. Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth, the word of God, and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming, that is, the one whose coming is in accordance with the activity of Satan, with the power, signs, and false wonders. So, man, the Antichrist is going to put on a show. He's going to put on a show. People are going to buy it hook, line, and sinker, right? There's so much spirituality stuff in America, it's ridiculous. Uh, and with the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send on them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they may be judged who do not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. So he's talking about this being again, this lawless one that comes. And so the scriptures actually just give like a couple of names, you know, like one is the beast. And, and what is that? The beast, so that refers to our beast nature. We are born with a nature of sin. We are born with a nature of selfishness. And it's like a beast nature. That, that we want to live in this carnality and nobody's going to tell us what to do. 
And, uh, and so th this is what is so desirable that like, you know, you can't tell me what I want to be or identify or anything like that. And then he's also called the little horn in the book of Daniel, which means that he's one of 10, but he's a smaller one. But then he rises up and takes ascendancy uh, in the end times. He's also called the man of sin. He's called the son of perdition. He's called the wicked one. He's called the willful king. He's called the Antichrist. And this is probably what we know him more than anything else. And let me just say that the word, the, the Antichrist, uh, there's been many people in the past who have been possessed by an Antichrist spirit. Uh, Nero was definitely possessed by an Antichrist. Uh, Napoleon, a lot of your world conquerors, right? Like uh, Alexander the Great, these people I just want to, you know, Kaiser, Wilhelm, Mussolini, Hitler, Lenin, Stalin, Pol Pot, uh, uh, a lot of communist and Islamic nations. There's, this, there's an Antichrist spirit uh, among these people. So, so here's what's going to happen. The Antichrist is going to arise at a time of turbulence in the Middle East. That's why I say keep your eyes on the Middle East. There's going to be something that's going to happen in the Middle East, and the AI Christ is going to rise up and be the solution. He's going to be the problem solver. Now, I don't have a precedent on this, but let me tell you that this is what I strongly believe. Iran right now is in the news all the time because they're trying to build nuclear weapons. They say that they're just building nuclear reactors for power, but they're not. They're trying to get the, the materials needed to build weapons of mass destruction. Israel cannot let that happen. They will not let it happen. Because Israel is so tiny of a nation, one nuke will probably wipe out half of it. So they're going to strike first. And right now, this administration keeps making these dumb deals with Iran. Rather than just making a, you know, a line in the sand saying, no, you can't do that. You can't have your uranium. You can't do that. We're not going to allow that. Oh, you, we, just, you know, we just keep doing stuff with them. And so I just, this is personal, I believe one morning we're going to wake up and the news is going to say, Israel just nuked Iran. They just nuked a facility that was building nuclear weapons. And the entire world will turn against Israel. Because it's a scripture that every nation, including the United States, who has been its greatest ally, will turn against Israel. This is what the prophet Zechariah said. It will come about in that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the people. All who lift it will be severely injured, and all the nations of earth will be gathered against it. And so all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I think the most logical one is Israel's going to strike first against Iran, and the nations are going to be like, holy smokes. Literally, like, like you just set off a nuclear weapon. That's, that's unacceptable. And all of a sudden, there's going to be this big turmoil, and the Antichrist is going to arise with the solutions of peace and safety. And Paul the Apostle said this in 1 Thessalonians, while they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with a child. They will not escape. And this ends the first three and a half years of tribulation. There's this peace covenant and then peace and safety. Boom, it all ends halfway through. And then things get really rough. Daniel said in Daniel 12, 11, from that time on, the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up. There'll be 1,290 days, which is what? Three and a half years. So you got this seven year, this one week of Daniel's prophecy, the 60, 69 weeks so far, one missing week, seven years, boom, seven years of tribulation where everything is going to break loose and it's going to be hell on earth when all of this stuff starts taking place. Um, going back into Mark chapter 13, for in those days will be a time of tribulation such as never occurred since the beginning of creation, which God created until now and never will. Unless the Lord had shortened those days, no life would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, that's the Jews, whom he chose, he will shorten those days. And so think about the horrific periods of history. Think about World War II. That was a horrific time. And he's saying, this is going to be worse than anything that has ever happened in the history of the world. This is going to be a time of natural disasters. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be an earthquake that will rock the earth. Uh, there's probably going to be a meteor strike. The book of Revelation says, I saw something like a mountain come down and hit the sea. Um, there's going to be some tough times on planet earth. When we just look at America, what do we see? We see a nation that is $31 trillion in debt and climbing exponentially. That is something we have saddled our grandchildren's grandchildren with debt that they will never pay, and they will curse us. 
I know there's some people that they're like all in favor of student loan forgiveness. Okay, well, what's going to happen with those kids when they get into their 40s and the next generation says, we want even more forgiveness and this time you're going to pay for us? Oh, I don't think that's going to fly too well, right? $14.9 trillion of consumer debt. So that's just how much you and I are in debt, let alone the government. That's unsustainable. We have, in, we have economic instability and inflation that's probably going to lead us into a recession, and it will hit the entire world. We have social media addiction. <laughs> There's so much addiction on social media. Gaming, even Facebook. I find myself getting caught up and just scrolling through Facebook, and there's funny videos. And, there's a, the, and it's like after a while, I look in like an hour and a half, just went by. I'm like, Ken, what is wrong with you? Right? We have the threat of AI. We have this uh, chat, GBT. AI is scary. AI is so scary. Um, I love it when the AI responds and says, yeah, we would probably destroy humans because you're that messed up. Huh. Uh, we, have, uh, we have homelessness and drug addictions that are, that are out of control in a lot of our cities. Uh, most of uh, Go to Manchester, you can find them. Go to Concord, you can find them. We have fentanyl that is pouring over our southern border because this administration refuses to close that border down. There's no other nation in the world that is allowing 5 million plus people coming into it in the, over the last four years. It's insane. And fentanyl is coming over that border. Now, I know that like we're going to defund the police because there were three or four cases of abuse. Okay, well, what about the 100,000 addicts that die every year from fentanyl overdoses? You don't think that's a statistic that should... We're wiping out the younger generations. Fentanyl, there's enough coming over the border to kill every American a hundred times over. It's flooding our nation. And it's so addictive. And now we have xylazine. Have you heard of xylazine? That's called the zombie drug. It's more addictive than fentanyl. And it rots your flesh from the inside out. So people look like zombies. Their skin is peeled off. And, and they've got open wounds and infections over their legs and arms withering. It's xylazine. Oh, look it up. I wish I was making this stuff up, but I'm not. It's crazy. And it doesn't touch. Narcan can't touch it. And it's hyper, hyper, hyper addictive. One hit, and that's it. You're hit. You're, 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 you're hooked. You can't get off of it. It's just. It, and this is coming over our southern border. But no, we want to allow these immigrants. And listen, I understand there's people in South America that are living under horrible regimes. I understand that. But we have an immigration policy. What they're doing is illegal. They're just raiding our southern border, and it's illegal, and it's wrong. And what it's doing is robbing the opportunity of other people in the world that want to come in through our immigration policy. And so, but, but no, like, we're not going to address that. We stopped the Vietnam War at 56,000 casualties over 11 years because we're like, that's too many young people dying for nothing. This is 100,000 a year dying. But we don't want to look at that. Let's not look at that. That doesn't fit our agenda. So, I mean, you know, I think, I think there's some crazy things going on. Mental health. So, uh, so many of our young people on, on psych meds, mental, mental health. Socialism. Hatred of America. I mean, come on. This is Antifa. What's on that shield? That's the hammer and sickle. That's communism. Antifa is nothing but an anarchist communistic group that wants to see the destruction of this country. It is all over their propaganda. There they are waving the, 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 the communistic flag. Listen, you want to talk about what's horrible? Because they're saying, oh, you know, you, you killed some people, your police officers are fascists, blah, blah, blah. No, if you want to talk about the most horrible thing to ever hit humanity, it's communism. More people have died through communism than any other means on the planet. Hundreds of millions of people have been slaughtered in the name of communism. And yet our young people are being brainwashed in our colleges that that's the way to go because America has been bad and evil and hey, they, they had slaves. And we abolished it, right? Like they don't look at that part. Like we did our, we, 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 we owned our mistakes and we tried to move on, okay? Shrinking of our military. In just the last three years, we went from 100% capacity down to 70%. 5%. If a war breaks out, who's going to fight for us? Do you think the furries are going to sign up? Like, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, 
And then, and then, and it's only getting worse, right? And then we have a food crisis. You got to ask, you got to ask yourself the question: Why is Bill Gates and China buying up all our farmland right now? It's happening. I mean, it's just this is the news, folks. They're not making this stuff up, right? It's all about control because, boy, when you get the food, people will do anything for food. Crime, violence, no morals, as it was in the days of of, of uh, Noah. And when you go back in Genesis and read that, the time of Noah, it said the earth was filled with violence. And right now we have violence. Um, the perversion, the LGBT being celebrated, drag queen hours in, 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 you know, in, in, in libraries. And, 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 you know, you have to ask yourself, why, why do these people want an audience of children? It's all about grooming. It's all about getting our kids as young as they can. We have schools pushing hormone blockers and mutilation surgeries, and that seems to be okay. And I wonder what would happen if the church started ministering to kids and then holding secret baptisms. How long do you think that would last? How long do you think it would last to have secret baptisms? No, but you can have secret mutilation of children. It is God awful. Abortion, 62, 63 million abortions. Well, I think that's okay. Watch a video of a DNC abortion and then you tell me if you think that's okay. When they go in with forceps and rip the arms off one at a time and the legs off one at a time and then the head, they pop it up. That is not okay. That is horrific murder in the sight of God. And I'm telling you one thing, read the book in the Old Testament, things weren't different. They sacrificed their children to the demon gods. And God never forgave the nation that shed innocent blood. And we think because we're Americans, like nothing's going to happen to us. we got to wake up, folks. we got to wake up because the signs are all over about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it's all through Scripture. But when we talk about what's the sign of this coming, because all of this stuff has always been, right, Antichrist spirits and earthquakes and famine, and blah, blah, blah. But what is the sign? What is the irrefutable sign that Jesus is returning? Do you know what it is in Scripture? The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. The sun will be darkened and the moon will be turned to blood. Anything that happens in our atmosphere gives us a blood moon. Certain times of certain years, there's, you know, the blood moon. But, I mean, the Canadian fires, right, just that smoke in the air can give, like, a, the, 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 the moon looking. And, and, and Bill Gates wants to put reflective chemicals in our atmosphere to shield the power of the sun because of global warming. We're all going to die of global warming. Poor Greta. Poor Greta. Oh, by the way, this is the year that we're all to die. According to Greta, we would all be dead this year, right? And, and here we are. In the 70s, it was all the gas is going to run out. Everybody was freaking out. In the 80s, it was the planet was going to freeze. In the 90s, it was the ozone layer was going to go. And in the 2000s, it was global warming that turned to climate change when we had some pretty bad winters, right? The only thing that's happened in all of those things is your taxes went up. That's it. Nobody died. It's just your taxes went up. So this is a sign all through Scripture um, if anyone says, well, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, Isaiah chapter 13. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger to make an end in the desolation. He will uh, exterminate, he will, and he will exterminate its sinners from it. For the stars of the heaven and their constellations will not flash forth their light. The sun will be dark when it rises, and the moon will not shed its light. Joel chapter 3. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near, the valley of decision. The sun and the moon grow dark and the skies lose their brightness. Amos, Ezekiel, Ezra, Revelation, Daniel, Zechariah, they all say the same thing. The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. Why? That is the sign, the only sign that is consistent through scriptures of the coming of Jesus. Why is that? Are you ready for this? I love the scriptures. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day and the night. So that's the sun and the moon. And let them be for signs. Now look, and he goes on and he says, for seasons, for days, and for years. So yeah, we know that they give us our seasons and our days and our years. And our calendar goes over the solar and the lunar cycles of our, of our planet and our solar system. We get that. But the very first thing God said, the reason that they're up there is that they're signs. And when you see the sun grow dark and the moon turn to, to blood, that is the sign that Jesus is breaking forth through that eastern sky. I mean, he's going to, listen, here's the thing. He didn't stay dead, and he's not going to stay gone. He is coming back again. 
And I want to close with Acts chapter 1, verse 9. This is after the ascension. Jesus is lifted up into a cloud of glory. And it says, and after he said these things, he was lifted up. And while they were looking, a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, whom has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Because there's some people say, oh, it's just going to be a spiritual return. Like, and it's going to be, you know, it's just, that was an allegory. And it's just going to be like, love will just, you know, the year of Aquarius, you know, the flower children of the 60s. And, you know, it's just going to be, it's going to be all this kind of stuff, you know. And they're like, no, 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 the same Jesus, physical. You just saw the, the, the nail wounds and the, the spear wound. You felt him and touched him and handled him. You ate breakfast with him. This same Jesus, physical and body form going up, is coming back the exact same way. Jesus is coming back. It's going to be at the end of the worst seven-year period in human history, especially the last three and a half years. But when he comes back, that's it. It's game over. And for a thousand years, there'll be a time of peace. And then we get into new heavens and new earth and just the, you know, the, the perfect age of all of this being done. And you say, why is all this happening? Theolo you know, um, scholars and, and philosophers, what? we're just God's pawns. Why would you believe in this God? He, and, and you need to understand, God desires a family that will choose him of their own volition. So he gifted us with free will. And we can blame Adam and Eve for using their free will and sinning against God and bringing this all on us. But I guarantee you every single one of us would fall also. Because we have a desire to use freedom against the one who gives it to us. And that's that selfish nature, that sinful nature that's in us. And so God has allowed us in our free will to fall leagues below his intended glory for us so that in our despair, we would cry out to him and say, you know what, I choose you. What, it, what a day it was for me when Darlene said, I choose you. And I said, I choose you. And we were married, right? And, and, it, and it's blissful, happy ever after. What, you mean you didn't get that? But it's a picture of Jesus and his church that Jesus is saying on the cross, I choose whoever comes to me. And when we say, I choose you too, we're bound in a, a love relationship where we just love to worship him. Does it mean that we walk before him perfectly? No, we still fall. We still fail. We still do stupid stuff all the time. But we have forgiveness. And it's not that we're looking for a license to do bad things. We don't want to, but there's that desire where there's evil in this world. What will it be when Jesus returns and evil is vanquished and that is removed? It will be heaven on earth. It will be heaven on earth and we will rule and reign with him. So when we talk about eschatology, the study of end times, don't freak out and say, oh my God, it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's just a transition from one age to another age to another age. And it's going to be, yes, it's going to be cataclysmic. Things are already pretty bad. You've got to admit it, right? Things are already pretty bad. We were going to show a video for missions, but there's a lot of testimonies, and I don't want to take up too much time, so we cancel it. But in that video, it's a guy that ministers in India, and he says, you know, there are 32 million slaves in the world today, and 16 million of them are from India. And they're little children that are kidnapped and brought into sex slavery. He said there are entire villages in India where you cannot find a girl under the age of 10. They've all been abducted. They've all been kidnapped. They've all been sold into the brothels. Listen, how long will God tolerate that when he said, suffer the little children? If you're going to mess with children, better to put a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the sea. And we are just doing, we're aborting children. We're, we're deceiving children with all this gender identity bunk. It's ridiculous. It's just crazy. And, and, and like you say, why? Why is it? I mean, just like in the last 
four years, boom, it's like crazy everywhere. And, you know, and people are pushing wokeness on, you know, every which way, but loose. And why, why, why? Listen, it's a demonic nature. Darkness is starting to cover this planet. The presence of evil is on the move. But Jesus is coming. There's a day that Jesus is coming, and we look forward to that day. I'll tell you what, my pastor used to say, I'm not looking for the undertaker, I'm looking for the overtaker. And that's what our faith needs to be in, that Jesus is coming. It doesn't mean that we don't fight the good fight. It doesn't mean that we don't get involved in politics. It doesn't mean that we don't use our voice to call evil evil and begin to you know, call things out that are wrong and, and not accept them and not tolerate them. But it does mean that it's going in a direction and it's not going to change because what was written is written and the Antichrist will come and it's going to be darkness. And are you ready? Your, is your faith in Christ? Is your faith in the one who died for you? There's salvation in no other name. And he's saying, if you use your free will to come to me, I will save you and I'll bring you into my heaven. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Amen. Thank you. So be prayed up. Be prayed up and be ready. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for your scriptures that give us a warning. Uh, we're, we're just so thankful. It's, it's, like, it's like a police officer that's by the side of the road and flags you down and says, hey, I just want to let you know the bridge is out. Um, and, and that's what your scriptures are. They, they warn us. They, they, they let us know that the bridge is out in the future so that we can find alternate routes. And Lord, I just pray that anyone here today, anyone that's hearing this through uh, Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or on our website, that you would seriously consider the claims of Jesus Christ, that you would look into who he says he is, what he said he did, and what he wants to do for you, and that you would investigate that until you come to that peaceful place where you say there is no other salvation other than in his name. He's my God who created me and he loves me and he saved me through his cross. Father, I pray that for every single person here today. May we be witnesses of your love and uh, what you've done for us to other people as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.